I say, we collect as much as we can carry. Pride. Allow me to open your chest. In the early 2010s, when DLC and video games started to really take the piss, it was often argued that content had been developed for the game, carved out of the game, and then paywalled. And developers would often argue back by going, oh no, we don't do that. Uh, first of all, on an individual game-by-game -game basis, a lot of times those developers were talking bullshit. And on a macro level, as I've argued in the past, um, incrementally content has been scaled back from games and then resold to us. Um, and what I mean by that is a, a feature in a game that would historically have been part of the base package, like alternate costumes, has been taken out on a, uh, uh, you know, a slow evolutionary process as they just start pinching things that used to be there and then presenting them as premium items, which are a lot of the younger gamers now, they think that's normal because that's what they grew up with. Um, it's always been bollocks, the idea that they didn't hold content back to sell as DLC uh, once the greed really set in. And when you look at what Capcom has been selling in Dragon's Dogma 2, I think you'll agree with me. Often is the time someone will tag me or address me on the social medias and say, I know what Monday's going to be about. Often is the time I'll see this confident prediction stated without additional context to links or even basic explanation. So I regularly have no idea what the fuck these people are talking about. This past week saw a particular inundation of vague predictions, but unlike some weeks where I cannot work out what people are so eager to see me tackle, it took no time at all to discover why people were chomping at the bit and smacking their chops in anticipation of today's borderline incoherent manifesto. Yeah, the moment I saw Capcom took Dragon's Dogma 2 and turned it into one massive scam, I realised exactly what everyone was alluding to. Our services do not come cheap. Good God, though. Dragon's Dogma 2 is quite genuinely disgusting, a sequel that very deliberately does nothing to iterate or improve upon a game released in fucking 2012. Dragon's Dogma 2 instead exploits the original's worst aspects by selling the things that make them bearable for cash on top of the minimum MSRP of $70 they already took from ya. The utter shamelessness on display is fucking shocking, as Dragon's Dogma 2 has released with 21 separate in-app purchases selling extremely rare and prohibitively expensive items, some of which offer the kind of basic conveniences that are in practically every other open world adventure game. This most egregiously and despicably of all includes fast travel, which requires fairy stones that are jacked up to a fucking ridiculous 10,000 in-game monies. It's half as much as a house costs in the game. And are required to avoid hoofing around the map on foot, taking upwards of 20 fucking minutes between towns. Yes, Dragon's Dogma 2 has monetized fast travel, transforming these supposedly rare and valuable items into easily obtainable commodities. If you have the real world coin. I need you to stop and truly appreciate what is happening here because as absurd a thing as it is to say, we gotta drink it in, man. Just how fucking greedy, how manipulative and how goddamn gross this is. Capcom is selling fast travel as a premium purchase. Curious thing. One of my former masters chose to hire only one. I want to hire. Okay. 
in any open world game, monetizing fast travel would be a malicious thing to do. But I cannot emphasize enough how much worse it is with Dragon's Dogma, a series that thought the worst parts of Shenmue were the best parts of Shenmue and could, in fact, stand to be worse. What do you presume to gain by this, Arisen? First of all, the game doesn't let you just warp to any discovered location, but only to specific points that are so rarely found in the world that after, I don't know, I've been playing it for like 10 or 15 hours or so, and I found one. You can use an equally rare item to place your own waypoints, but again, finding them is like finding a miniature but very alive unicorn in your urethra. And of course, actually fast traveling anywhere requires those rare 10,000 gold consumables. This means a lot of fucking walking back and forth through the same winding and excessively long paths to get anywhere or keep using ox carts, which both cost money and only go to very specific destinations because of course they fucking do. On top of that, are all the vaguely explained objectives that can see a trek to quest locations without the right items. There are objectives that appear only at certain times of day, events that occur every few days, but they don't tell you what the fucking calendar is. Some quests suffer from so much obfuscation, they will appear bugged, because absolutely no sense of progress will be communicated to the player. Like, I looked up a walkthrough for a quest earlier today because, again, the thing looked soft locked, and that's exactly what the walkthrough warned readers about. They said this quest looks bugged but it's not. It's just that poorly fucking explained. But don't worry, you can bug the fuck out of some quests by, say, picking up an innocuous item that had to be picked up later but you weren't told to that. It's very easy to do things in the wrong order and fuck yourself. It's very easy to trek for miles and get where you think you're going and just not know what the fuck. Fuck. And there's a myriad other little fuck yous. A ton of other ways in which this trolling, backtracking, monsters keep falling in the water and taking their loot with theming video game wastes your fucking time. Even in 2012, a lot of what Dragon's Dogma was doing was inconvenient, detrimental, and extremely bloody dated. There was a lot to love despite its flaws, but it was held back by a lot of them. It's the exact kind of thing a sequel would be downright expected to fix. Capcom didn't fix it. In fact, it's kept everything so exactly the same as to be indistinguishable from its predecessor seemingly for the explicit reason of selling workarounds instead. That's it. I've had enough. Clear off. And don't come back till you're ready to do business properly. Also, let this put paid to any attempts of any defenders of bad game design to claim that Dragon's Dogma's terrible travel options are good actually TM. No matter the terrible mechanic, no matter the fucked up idea, no matter the failed gimmick, it's guaranteed that anything a video game does has a gaggle of defenders who twist and turn to explain why, say, weapon degradation is good actually. I mean, the gaming community is one in which someone defended Kane and Lynch 2's cover system being broken on the ground that cover not working is more realistic. Fuck off. God. In fact, I know exactly what people will say in this case. Dragon's Dogma restricting fast travel is good actually because it forces you to explore and discover things. You know, shit like that. Praising something for forcing you to do things you wouldn't do otherwise because you don't want to do them. Well, any and all defense of DD's slow travel system can go lie face down in a stream because Capcom has happily undermined them all in pursuit of exploitative money. As I've explained for years, when a publisher sells you a way to to mitigate a part of their game, that's them admitting it's so fucking bad you'll be tempted to pay to avoid it. And at that point, they're admitting they've made a bad fucking game. It's literally them saying, we made an experience so shit, you'll happily pay to play less of it. Nothing about it screams positive to me. Nothing about it makes a game look Good. Capcom put a price on fast travel because people want to fast travel, because hoofing it back and forth through distinctly undynamic terrain is bullshit, and everybody knows it. Capcom, most of all. With its microtransactions, the publisher has fucking copped to the fact that it refused to update Dragon's Dogma's archaic gameplay with spiteful intent. As with a literally every so-called time saver microtransaction, Capcom is selling solutions to problems it deliberately created. If you waste someone's time on purpose and then sell them a time saver, you haven't actually saved any time, you've just brought them back to baseline. It is literally selling you nothing. Status quid pro quo, or something. I don't know if that works.
sounded cool. In any case, fuck you if you do that. You are a con merchant. And in a just world, what you do would be considered fraud. And as much as I've borderline tolerated Dragon's Dogma's bullshit in 2012, because like I say, there is good in there, the bullshit is so much harder to swallow this time. In fact, I refuse to choke it down my cum pipe. It would be bad enough if Capcom had not fixed the fast travel out of sheer bloody idleness. But every time I'm quote unquote playing this game and I become fucking bored out of my skull by its time-wasting horse crap. I remember that Capcom made me feel this way on purpose because it's trying to prey on my impatience. And feeling a wolf breathe down your neck every second you're playing a game is beyond fucking off-putting. Even more off-putting than buying a $70 game and finding 21 in-app purchases attached to the c- I suppose I should thank Capcom for finally showing its ass and revealing exactly what I've been fucking warning people about with this publisher. Capcom has been putting out incredible games for many years now. In terms of sheer quality, their titles are some of the absolute best in the mainstream space. But they keep doing this. They keep contriving desperate and pathetic excuses to put microtransactions into largely single player games. It's something I got a lot of shit for pointing out with Devil May Cry 5. Though some of that hate came from morons who never forgave me for liking D. DMC. Now, I fucking adore DMC5, but Capcom just had to find some pathetic way to monetize it, which they did by essentially selling experience points. And people got mad at me for complaining about that. A lot of people defended the microtransactions on the actual basis of them being pathetic, claiming that because XP is easily earned in game, what Capcom is selling has no value and therefore it's okay? As I said at the time, a microtransaction being inherently worthless to the game is no reason to defend it. It's just as bad. Selling a bill of goods is bad. Since when is it a good thing to sell something to someone knowing it's going to be a useless letdown? Last I heard that was called being Peter Molyneux. Either Capcom is selling items that are useful, in which case it's leveraging its own content in a manipulative manner that borders on pay to win, or it's selling inherently worthless shit for a profit, which by any definition should be considered a full on scam. Which is it? Is it a coercively useful scam or a fraudulently valueless scam? Those are the two categories Capcom's microtransactions fall under. And like with all microtransactions, in premium games or in general, you're wasting your time trying to defend them to me. My arguments are inherently designed for them to not win, which was easy to do. It happened again with last year's Resident Evil 4 remake, as I understand it, some other content makers really enjoyed mocking my suggestion that RE4's in-game economy was just as predatory as any other in-game economy. You know, like it is. One thing I've learned over the years is I'm allowed to attack microtransactions in EA and Activision games all day long. But if I don't make exceptions for the gaming community's favourites, if I don't turn an eye sewn shut, if I dare be comprehensive, if I'm consistent with my viewpoint, I'm somehow the one at fault. Yeah? Well, enjoy your premium priced fast travel Capcom fans, because you fucking asked for it. As I've said before, the slippery slope argument is one of the few argumentative fallacies to not be fallacious in the wacky world of video games. Publishers have proven time and time again that if you give them an inch, they'll take a nation. Every single time a game company has gotten away with something, it's always gotten worse, pushed the envelope, and stretched the borders of what we as customers will find acceptable. It's literally why microtransactions are so bad now, so prevalent, so excessive and extreme. Because mainstream game publishers don't slip down the slope. They ride an avalanche down it, waving a cowboy hat around and going, woohoo! Oh, that was a bit blur. What's cowboys? Um, woohoo! That's all I can do. And I'm making a fruity limp wrist gesture when I do it. I'm just irretrievably queer. Anyway, point is, we all know what publishers are like. We've all seen their MO. Yet with years of documentation to that effect, people still defended Capcom's shitty single player microtransactions to their hilt, remaining adamantly ignorant about the fact that corporations are vampires and you do not invite them in. Instead, fans defended them, accepted them, condoned them. They sent the message to Capcom that taking the piss was okay, so they just kept taking more of it. Dragon's Dogma 2 is in essence the scam people wanted. Y'all wanted to be taken advantage of like this because you kept tearing down anyone who didn't think it was okay. Dragon's Dogma 2 is the natural piss taken result of a piss taker who's been allowed to take so much piss that everything stinks of piss. 
you're in no less. Point of the video ain't and I told you so, but I did. It's just really friggin' sad Capcom keeps doing this. The base products it's putting out are consistent bangers, and yet each one has an obligatory suite of desperate contrived in-app purchases that are either so worthless as to be colloquially fraudulent or desirably predatory. Street Fighter VI was a fucking treat last year, its accessibility features allowing me to play a fighting game to my complete joy. Yet it directly contradicts its own accessibility with inherently ableist microtransactions that, as we've discussed before, particularly target neurodivergent people. How fucking dare anyone defend these? DMC, RE4, SF6, any one of them could have been valid GOT-wise for me, but by my MO, they're all DQ'd for their MTX. And that's some sorry BS. I mean, of all games, I don't want to be stuck adding caveats to my praise of a game with Marissa in it. Oh, and we didn't even point out how shady Capcom's been with this shit lately. With RE4, they pulled the extra slimy move of adding the microtransactions after launch, which for many previously explored reasons is fucking gross. With Dragon's Dogma 2, Capcom had them at launch, but it was a total surprise that would have caught any pre-orderers at the very least. Given how targeted the predation is and how it can lead to problem spending, kids clearing out family bank accounts, and addiction, it should be seen as a safety issue when a game ambushes its players with surprise microtransactions. That is not an informed purchase. There are people who do not play games with exploitative economies in them because they're vulnerable to them and don't want to feel that pressure on something they bought for fun. To try and catch those people out, to lure them in like that, I just... Fucking hell. I struggle to understand how anyone doesn't think that is sick. So anyway, we'll have a Dragon's Dogma 2 review up on thegymquisition.com real soon. Ciao! Demolish alarm! Why that means Stephanie Sterling has finally brought up Peter Molyneux during an episode of the Jim Quisition that I've been working on. Oh, this is fantastic. One of the very first parodies I ever wrote was about Peter Molyneux and I could never use it on here. Finally, I can finish this story. Eat it, Cody Rhodes, and hit the airbus. My mind. new gameplay, oh yeah, and yet each fable basically plays out in a similar way. As though he's been put on the shelf, is he even ashamed of himself? Molly, you give him a mic and promise more. Molly, you swears it'll show up in code of court. All of you claims will see things that are bold in you. All of you turns out his words to dog you. Whoa, 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 all of you. Why do we listen to all of you? Right. Zilla can fuck off upstaging me with the songs. I'm going to do one myself. It's called Thank God for Me, and it's going to be great. Um, ready? Yeah.